Hey, welcome to Live from Dennis's House. Today we have a special treat. I don't know if you should call it that, but we're doing our tribute to Greg Allman, who passed away recently. And as usual, we're going to celebrate his life. We're not going to sit here and cry about him dying. We're going to celebrate his life and his music and all the good times that we had. Nice Irish funeral. Yes. So, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff we're going to need to talk about, a lot of stuff going on in the world, and we're going to talk everything about Greg Allman, everything about the Allman Brothers, everything we're going to talk about Cher, and I don't know, what else? Whatever we want to talk about. There's a yeah? lot to there's cover. There's a lot to cover, exactly. Yeah. So, anyway, we're going to start the show off with long-distance dedication. You know who we're going to dedicate today's show to? We're going to dedicate it to Chaz Bono, wherever Ooh. she may be. Nikki, you know who that is? Well, I know. Chastity Bono was Sonny and Cher's tiny little daughter who used to be on the show back in the 70s. This cute little blonde-haired girl. And now this cute little blonde-haired girl grew up to be a big man with a beard. A yep. And oh. his yep. name is Chaz Bono now. It's no longer Chastity Bono. And it's now a boy. I used to have a friend that we used to call Chaz Bono. <laughs> he hated it. He did he look to... like Chaz Bono? He did. He did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. We need to have him on the show. I'll get him on. She was really <laughs> to do that sex change that, yeah yeah you know. that was 15 years ago now yeah 20 years well, a long time ago. that's what happens when uh i guess shares your mother and uh sonny yeah. bono's <laughs> father <laughs> or greg Allman's your stepdad oh yeah well yeah i actually have some stories about that uh, she told about him uh so uh, we'll get all to that so let's start off with some great great music we're gonna play sweet melissa and one way out they have nothing to do with Chaz bono but I, those are the songs i wanted to play so <laughs> We'll fit it in somehow, <laughs> and we'll be right back <laughs> with the show. Exactly. Well said. I want to talk about insincerity and people who are the real deal and when you know it. Yeah. I was watching some show. We were watching some show, and it was a Greg Allman show, live in concert. Yes. And he played Sweet oh. Melissa, and it was so good. I was weeping I in was my weeping. living room. Yeah. I actually had something in my eye. I wasn't really crying. Sure, really sure, Dennis. Nice. But anyway, really was I actually got so angry at this point that I was like, how do these people who are producing music now walk around with a straight face thinking they're doing something good when look how awesome this is and no one will ever do anything near as good as this and i wanted to get everyone together who's doing music and punch them all directly in the face <laughs> well what about kanye west <laughs> exactly <laughs> that was my number one no, person not on the kanye. list he's well, the well. <laughs> <laughs> to the rule yeah yeah so and then that brings me to everything that's going on in the world and nobody's a real deal Greg Allman was the real yeah. deal. You didn't see him sniveling and whining and complaining. He had hepatitis C yeah. and he was glad to have it. He yep. was very yes. sick. He that, was glad. You know, so I want to talk about these people who are trying to be outrageous now. And when people call them on it, they start crying, such as Kathy Griffin, the comedian. Oh. So oh, she tried to be outrageous, you know, and I don't are even care about this? that. No, I don't uh, care what she did. The fact is Nick, that because she's a comedian. <laughs> Listen, she's a comedian. She's supposed to be doing that thing. She, if she wants to be edgy, she's supposed to be doing stuff like this. Yeah. This is what the counterculture is supposed to do. Right. You know, like Lenny Bruce back in the 60s. Yeah. He was outrageous. He didn't cry. Then that's what got me upset. When people yeah. backlash against against Kathy Griffin, she's crying. Woo, 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 yeah, woo. Yeah, it's all the backlash well, that she said it. it. You exactly. It you said it. You wanted to be outrageous. And then when it came back to you, you start crying and then do an uh, apology with no makeup on. Like you're going to scare yeah. people straight. And you know? She looked rough. Per- <laughs> and then blame <laughs> the person who you were ridiculing. Well, like, she was good in that uh, movie with Cher, though. Uh, speaking of Cher. Well, the Mask, uh, remember? Oh, the mask. Yeah, she Did played... she play the son? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, is that too? See, that low I'm low? not going to apologize. Is that low Come low? on, come at me, bro. I will never, right I'll never apologize and cry on television. He said, come at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see? And then the same thing. Mr. Outrageous himself, Bill Maher. He goes and yeah. says the N-word when everybody knows you can't say the N-word. No, and then he's sniveling never. after he says it. Don't say it. You can't say no. it. No. Put so, it out of your head. You can... Exactly. So why do you apologize? Because uh, people they, complain. Nobody's ever sorry that they said this stuff because they said it and they wanted to say they it. They got caught. They're sorry they got caught. Exactly. And then it was a problem. It's just somebody like somebody got angry. That's it's all. just like yeah. Elliot Spitzer. He's not sorry. He's sorry he got caught. Right. Carlos Danger, Anthony Weiner. He's not sorry. He's sorry he's got caught. That's right. That's it. 
nobody's ever sorry unless I do something wrong. Then I'm sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> That's most yeah, other people yeah, just hear that cha cha. Yeah. Your, your husband's sorry. <laughs> He's a sorry man. Uh, yeah. yeah. So all these rock stars never apologized. Greg Allman never apologized for anything. He had a crazy sick Horrible life. Father. Yes, he didn't apologize. He didn't go on TV crying Wrote with no makeup. The kids. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna get to that. That's yeah. gonna be. But a he gave us sweet talking. Melissa. Exactly. You know Which is. If I had wow. a if I had a pick, either he was a good dad or I get sweet Melissa. <laughs> Let's be honest. His kids don't exist to me at that point in time. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, I think he made up in the end with some of them. Uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 Chaz turned out. It was good. too late for Chaz and yeah. Elijah Blue, but the others, uh, you know. So Did, we'll get all on to that. But, what? Chaz, well, she was. Chaz wasn't even well, her, his son. I was son, just gonna say they daughter. were married for like a minute. Well, and contrary to popular belief, well, we have to get into okay. that whole thing. All right. But anyway, you know who else is insincere? Nick Cannon. Do we know who Nick Cannon is? Yeah. yeah. Yes. He started out yeah. on Nickelodeon uh, as, I don't know what he was, he was doing. Just a, ho- a little like kid a- show. Yeah, and then right. he's America's Got Talent. He's, you know. Yeah. He's all over the place. He's just Mr. Nice Guy. And right. he marries Mariah Ma- Carey. But now all of a sudden, he's a gangster rapper. Oh, nice. He's thug. I, he is a thug gangster rapper. Straight yeah. out of Compton. He's, and the most ridiculous part about it is... Yeah, he now wears a turban. Has anyone ever seen this? I didn't this? see this. Are you that, kidding? I swear it. to God. He's trying to Is start sh- this new trend. and But it's he looks more like a li- Liz Taylor than he does Ice Cube. Is he a Shiate or a Sunni? Is this a joke? Is he trying to be funny? No, he's trying to be outrageous. He's and trying he's, to get beat up. <laughs> That's it's gonna just, happen. You know. <laughs> I, Muslims uh, don't even wear turbans. No, it's nothing to do with that. Oh, he's not Muslim or anything. He's just—it's a fashion statement a fashion that he statement. thinks it look cool, and it's like a pink turban with a big jewel in the middle, <laughs> and it's not a wraparound turban. Like I said, it's a turban it's like that Stella. your mom wore in the '60s <laughs> My mom when she was going to the off. beach or something. My mom still wears one. <laughs> Oh, your, my mom your still rocks it. And a house coat, too. <laughs> and a house coat. And a moo moo. Yeah. She wears a moo moo and a. He really could have been uh, like the next. Uh, who's the host of American Idol? What's his name? He's with Kelly Ripon. Oh, oh, my. Yeah, I know who you mean. Ryan Seacrest. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Seacrest. Uh, America's I sweetheart. Really thought Ryan Nick Seacrest. Cannon was going to go that and that's way. He could have. And that's where he was. And then he got thrown off of uh, that show because he did a stand up routine and he's using the N word all Say, the time. Yeah, and Ryan Seacrest never did. Look at him. Everyone's gone he owns crazy. Everything. Every, yeah. He owns everything. He does. So, he's actually very um, popular. Yeah. They, they're fight over him to host things yeah. now. Yeah, he hosts like every other show. He's He'll be busy. hosting America's yeah, Got, got Talent busy. for he sure. He never wore a pink turban and used the <laughs> N-word, I'm nope. sure. <laughs> no, he knew yeah, better. And he doesn't have to apologize for nothing. nothing. See, that's it. You know, Ryan Seacrest, I have more respect for him because he yeah. is what he is. He doesn't make believe he's anything right. other than he is. Mm-mm. So if you're going to come out and be outrageous, you better be outrageous. Right. I mean, you better be Snoop Dogg. That's exactly. right. You better be you Snoop. Better be Snoop Dogg. Preach, I Cha-Cha. love Snoop Dogg. <laughs> I love Snoop. Exactly. I loved him when he came out. Mm-hmm. And I love him even more now. He's got a lot yeah. of moxie, that guy. Let me tell you. Yes. Because you know, so. I, I started becoming too nice for a while. Yeah, and I was know, calm I and I was you. enjoying yeah, myself. It, Everything was going smooth. But now they've pulled me back in. It was very I'm unnatural, though. Very angry again. Just like I'm going to throw Matt Nikki's Gioli phone now. called him sick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's start talking about Greg Allman. Everyone knows Greg Allman, of course, and he just passed away. He had a great long career, but I bet nobody yeah. knows his real name, his middle name, actually. It's Gregory uh, Lenoir mm-hmm. Allman. It's a French. French? Yeah. Who knew that Lenoir was his middle name? Mm. I think that's the reason he turned to drinking and drugs, but uh, we'll <laughs> yeah. get to it. So he was born December 8th, 1947 in Nashville, Tennessee, and he had uh, he was actually... Well, no, I actually got to go back a little bit. Uh, he had a tragic event occur in his lifetime that when he was a little kid, uh, maybe two years old, his father was murdered by a hitchhiker that they were apparently his father was at Korean War. He came back home and he was at a bar or something and he gave some guy a ride home. And then the guy wanted to mm. steal the car, and he ended up shooting him and killing what? his father. Yes. Wait a minute. Yes, no that way. all it happened. in the Korean War. Why? Because he was born in 1947. The Korean War took place after, after. that year. All right, whatever. I thought he said Korean. Then, Well, well I guess it would have to be when World when War II. No. The Korean War no, it makes sense. If he was born in 1952. Yeah. It Korean War was 1951, 1952. Vietnam, maybe then. Well, if he was born in 47, it could be 49. It had to be World War II. Nick, we need you to oh, look well, that up. Well, actually, no. His father could have went to the Korean War after he was born. 
and then right. was killed after the Korean okay. War. So, yeah, so yeah, I don't know the possible. exact dates of that i didn't think i'd be questioned on it but next time i will make next sure time I'm, cite your sources. i have my dates correct but anyway his <laughs> father was, was murdered correct. and you know the most crazy part about it i saw an interview with greg and he was talking about how this guy contacted him later on in life and he told the whole story to greg that's how greg knew about this and wow. he tried to get um you know greg's uh, forgiveness and all of this kind of stuff but greg didn't want any part of it yeah so uh, yeah because this not. guy probably found out oh this is greg allman's dad i killed i should uh you know contact him now but uh anyway who knows where he is now but anyway greg was actually a very good student he was valedictorian and he wanted to be a dentist a dental surgeon nonetheless wow. Wow. but then he found the guitar yeah. and all that went out the window he said he didn't eat or sleep barely he just played the guitar and then um, he actually taught his brother Dwayne how to play the guitar. And Dwayne surpassed him in weeks and said, all right, I'm taking over the guitar now. So gotcha. anyway, they actually then, well, fast forward, they became uh, the Allman Brothers in 1969. They moved to Macon, Georgia and formed the Allman Brothers Band. Now, this was one of the greatest bands of all time, true originals. They mixed all different types of music that were never mixed before. You had blues, jazz, country, uh, R&B, soul. What they did started I miss? Rock. Southern Rock. Disco? Exactly. Southern Rock was, was them. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. There was no Southern Rock. No. True. Leonard and Skinner, 38 the Special, they all, copied, they all copied them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they did it much worse, I must say. <laughs> yeah. uh, not not oh, that they Leonard were bad. Skinner. Leonard Skinner was great, but they were, they were not as They're good not on the level. as the Allman Brothers. They're not on the level. That, uh, you know, they were just ridiculous. So, 1969, they came out with this album. I have a whole stack of Allman Brothers <laughs> here. They had the first album here. It was called The Allman Brothers Band. And it was actually a great album, but... As I've often mentioned, the people do not appreciate things when they first happen, especially if they're different. So only 35,000 copies of this album were sold that year. And that's nothing. That is nothing. Considering Disco Duck sold 35 <laughs> million that year. That's disappointing. <laughs> 30 Never underestimate oh. the stupidity of the American public, Jim. No. So anyway... <laughs> You could quote him on that. <laughs> <laughs> so then the next one they did was this album called Idle Wild South. Whoa, and that, that, that yeah. kind of picked up. And there. that did, you know, some more, but it still wasn't earth shattering. So just as Peter Frampton did mm. last show, the Allman Brothers did the same thing. They toured, toured, toured that year, 1970 into 1971, and they recorded the classic Live at the Fillmore East album. Do you know where they recorded this, Cha Cha? The film released. <laughs> nice. Yes. In that, New York City. Yes, yeah. that was one of the premier rock clubs yeah. in the world. I don't and think I was ever there. Now they close it down okay. before you were old enough to okay. go there. It is now a Starbucks, yeah, uh, just yeah. like the other place. <laughs> so, CBGB's. CBGB's a, is a Starbucks. 45,000 seat Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. People so, still waiting. Yeah. So then... Uh, you know, this was a great, great album. One of the greatest live albums of all time. But then tragedy struck once again. That in 1971, brother Dwayne, Dwayne Allman, a great, great guitar player, Phenomenal slide guitar, guitar player. player, he died in a motorcycle accident. Yeah. And yeah. He, wasn't, he was like 23, I think. And yeah, actually, wow. He was 22 or 23. I bet nobody saw this album. I have a whole Dwayne Allman anthology album here. Everything oh, he ever wow. did. All his uh, uh, session work and all that stuff. Wow. Uh, that's great, too. I gotta wow. So he died in 1971. Then tragedy struck again the next year that Barry Oakley, the bass player, died in a motorcycle accident. Again, almost the exact same location, a year to the day. That's eerie. Yes. Hmm. That's wild. You just not gasp or anything, Cha Cha. Wow. I was waiting for you to <clears throat> gasp. Oh, God. So, uh, yeah, so it's very, very sad. A lot of tragedy in their life. <laughs> Yeah. But She's then, desensitized. But then they just they just kept going. They got who did they get to replace uh, Dwayne Tedeschi? Uh, uh, well, no, I mean, come not, on. at that oh, point, I don't even know. No, uh, not back then. I gotta look at. I think it was Dan Tola was the guy's name oh because, of course, the band. Let's name the band. We got Greg Allman on keyboards and vocals. Mm. We have oh, and that's the beauty of the band too. They were the first band to have two drummers. Yeah. And two guitar players, yep. solo lead guitar players. They, like I said, Greg Allman, bass was Barry Oakley, 
drums. It was Butch Trucks and Jai Johanny Johansson, mm-hmm. which is really his name. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> guitar, we had Dwayne Allman and we had Dickie Betts, of course. Dickie. And let yes. me tell you something. Dickie Betts, man. <laughs> That's five. I counted five. What a guitar player he is. Yeah. No, I think there's more than that. Did I miss? There should be six. Okay. <laughs> Greg <laughs> plus Greg. Oh, oh right. we forgot Greg. So, all right. Okay. So now... After that, they kept going. You would think that would be enough to <laughs> shut a band down, but no. They produced album after album. Eat a Peach, yeah. a double album, classic songs. And they did Brothers and Sisters with the classic songs like Blue Sky and uh, Ramblin' Man. Everybody knows these songs, right? Yep. So... Nick, I need a face shield. Because <laughs> he's going to uh, either whip me with his hand or the album. <laughs> Dennis has got the Italians really getting coming out today. This is really so, so anyway, they keep going and going and going. And uh, they get to 1975, and that's where it starts going downhill. As, of course, every band has to have that downhill slide, right? And, of course, what's the main problem? Drugs. Drugs. Share. Oh. Share. Share was Ooh. one of the problems. I, I had a good. Feeling. That was good. So was we good. got, uh, we have drugs. We have fighting. We have a whole lot of trouble going on here. So now let's get back to our tribute to Greg Allman, of course. We're just at the point now where they're breaking up. Bad things are happening to the band. Share comes into the picture. A lot of drugs. A lot of fighting. A lot of arguing. The band breaks up and they start doing solo albums. So, like I said, Greg marries Cher. Mm. The Cher. That's pretty cool. They met and yeah. they knew each other for like nine hours, maybe. <laughs> and they got married. Love at first sight. Seriously. Marrying Cher. Now, I do recall, Chacha, that it only lasted like nine days yeah. and they got divorced. It, but it, that's not true. No, they not were together days, like three or four years. Was it that long? Yes, really? that's what all the documentation is uh, oh, alluding see, I, to. Okay, I owe them an apology. Yes. I thought Ma- they were married like a year. I'm with nine you on that. I, I was just. I thought it was nine days. I'm no. pretty sure I saw behind the music, and they said nine days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were but wrong. They, in that time, they had a child. Yes, they had a child called Elijah Blue. Poor yeah. kid. Yes. What can I say? I, I, oh, this, and they they had an album too. Greg and Cher put it out an album together. And Cher was like, "Oh, I want you to produce my album. I want you to sing on it." And he's like, "He's my, she's my wife. I guess I got to do it." What am I gonna so do? So they did an <laughs> album called "To the Hard Way," right? Yeah. And the funniest part is they went out on tour together, and it was just uh, it's like culture six, clash when they yeah. broke up. <laughs> no, because it was. All the Allman Brothers fans on one side, all the Cher fans on the other side, and they were fighting, and uh, like uh, Allman Brothers uh, fans were booing Cher, you know, get her off the stage, all this kind it of stuff. It wasn't like chocolate and peanut butter coming together. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. So it, it ended in divorce. Uh, yeah, <laughs> needless to say. Sorry to hear right. that. And... Uh, both Chaz and Elijah Blue say that Greg was so shockingly a terrible father <laughs> that um, <laughs> they both had like the same story that Greg had to pick him up from school one time and like they didn't get home till 11 o'clock at night because he, I think he took Elijah Blue to the bar hanging out <laughs> and he was like 10 and then Chaz just like he had to pull over because and do drugs and he fell asleep and she didn't get home till like 11 o'clock at night Ooh. and uh, Cher went berserk. So, <laughs> wow. Needless to say, wow. yeah. So, wow. yeah, Shit. they must have some good stories, though. Builds character, like yeah. I always say. It turned out okay. Yeah. Exactly. You know, what doesn't kill you. Yeah. You know? She's got a beard Chastity now. Chastity Bono <laughs> turned out great. <laughs> She's all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So then, exactly. after that, uh, a few years later, they reformed. The Allman Brothers Band got back together and they put out an album called Enlightened Rogues, which was a great, great album. And then, you know, they. Uh, Kept going on. They did more albums. Uh, I think I have some of them here. But anyway, Greg actually was... He was a terrible drug addict at this point. He was on heroin, cocaine. He would drink a quart of vodka every single day. And he went through 14 rehabs. And uh, it was... At this point, too, he got hepatitis C, Mm -hmm. cirrhosis, Mm -hmm. and cancer all in his liver. All at the same time, which is... Sounds bad, right? His liver basically liquefied. Yeah, and the story of how he got the hepatitis C was just ridiculous, that he was getting uh, tattoos back in the day, and he went to this one guy who was uh, supposedly a famous tattooist, and uh, Greg was telling the story. There was two buckets on the floor there. One was red and one was clear, and the guy reached in and took a needle out of the red bucket, 
dipped it into the white bucket, went like this, dripped it onto the wall, and then started tattooing him. Oh, shit. And the red bucket, it turns out, was blood. Oh, blood, I was so, just say. And Greg is like, oh, my God, I'm just lucky I didn't get uh, HIV. So, wow. you know, you have to take count your blessings. So, no, you're surprisingly, that's where I got all my tattoos, too. He... he <laughs> He's, Same guy. Uh, he gives a good discount, I got to say. The dirty <laughs> needle discount. You get it half price. So. It's not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so what happened to Greg? You want to know what got him uh, straight? Is that it was the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They were being inducted in 1995. And he was so bad uh, with drinking at this point that uh, he swore to himself, all right, I, I have to drink, otherwise he gets the shakes and the DTs. Mm -hmm. So he lined up shots all in his hotel room and at the Waldorf Astoria, and he says, all right, I'm going to have this one at 1 o'clock, this one at 2, <laughs> and I'll be just level, and I can go and do what I have to do, right? So needless to say, <laughs> that didn't work, yeah. and he got completely drunk, and Willie Nelson inducted him, and he walked up, and he couldn't. He had this whole long speech. He wanted to thank everybody, thank his mother, and he could barely stand up, oh, he said, by the time he got wow. there, and he was all bloated, and he could just mumble out something like, uh, you know, thanks to my brother, uh, and he, he like walked He's off. Off. Poor mother. Yeah. Oh. And then um, he said that he was able to look back at that, that they showed it like a couple days later, and he saw himself, and he was so disgusted. And he said, that's it. But he didn't want to go back to rehab. So what he did this time is he brought a nurse into his house, and he quit everything. No drinking, no drugs, no cocaine, no cigarettes even. And he just said, wow. I'm going cold turkey. This guy's going to give me what I need, keep me from dying. He's lucky and he didn't die then. Exactly. So, you know, mm -hmm. he, is, he definitely wow. has nine lives. What are the DTs? <laughs> Detox. Delir delirium tremors, they're called. Oh. That when you drink that much every day, if you stop for one day, you'll shake, shake. you'll get hallucinations. Oh, you'll vomit. Yeah, yeah. Get really so, sick. Yep. Oh. You have to absolutely do it. So then he was he got clean. And everything looked up after that. The band got back together. That's when they added Derek Trucks and Warren Haynes. Oh, and you know what else? I was in talks with Greg's people yeah. at this point. He was doing a whole residency at City Winery this yeah. year. And I was absolutely going to have an interview with him this year. And yeah. unfortunately, he passed away. Yeah. So, Drake, well, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and he has a new album that's going to be released this September called Southern Blood. Wow. Yep. So now, now it's time we're going to smell the album. Everyone gets their own album, and we're going to name like our it. favorite song, favorite Greg Allman memory. Here, Jim, you can have live at the Phil Maurice. Chacha, you got an album? Nikki's got two. I got this two. Is, you know, this is going to be hard. <laughs> yeah. Song, man. I'm going to smell this album here. Those I mean, of you I'm playing afraid, at home, actually. please go right get your album. Out. And I'm going to smell Eat a Peach. Oh, don't And oh, it looks man, like it was... This one is rough. Oh, Ah, this one was. Whoa. This one has rat urine on it, so that's the best. <laughs> oh my this God, one, Dennis! Ah. And a black out. and <laughs> tattoo <laughs> needles, <Jesus>. blood. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Ah. It's like so many good songs. I don't know Whoa. what's my favorite I song. I have one, Sweet Melissa. Yeah, Sweet Melissa. Oh, He's got it's so many good songs. I can't even. Gives me chills just saying the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you know, I'm gonna. I'm gonna it's it's tough for me. It's, I really. Uh, when I was in high school, Midnight Rider. Ah, oh, that's a good one. That's Midnight from a solo Rider career, really. Uh, I don't know why I really that's hit on this one. Yeah. Oh, it's on the album you have, Midnight Rider. Yep. That's on this one. That's like my. Uh, I don't know why it was like my jam back in the day. Dri living in Ohio. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Nikki? Uh, it's, it's so hard, <sighs> you know right? I'll be honest, Rambling right? man. Go ahead, be honest. Uh, I don't know much about the Allman Brothers. Oh, my God. There would be no country music without the Allman oh, Brothers. Oh, that's not true. Oh, <laughs> stop you know it. What, my problem is I'm not good with the names. I'm good. Like, if I hear something, I just I hear something. I think I'm going to give you Ramblin' Man or Blue Sky. You could have Blue Sky, Nikki. How about that? Blue Sky. All right. Blue very good. Is. So How about you, Nick? I like yeah. them all. We're not... <laughs> so there you have it Love so it. and you know i i was very sad as i was researching for this show i was watching a concert from the allman brothers and it was an yeah. outdoor concert and greg is up there singing they're back in their prime and his hair's blowing in the wind he had this long luxurious blonde hair yeah. and it was just <laughs> it made me so sad 
<laughs> that because I remember that I saw the Olin Brothers so many times, the outdoor shows and uh, getting all fired up, and it was just the best time. And I got so sad that I would never do it again. Fired up. Oh, you know? you know, I have a quick question. Before, sure. Before, um, it, I can't remember if this. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did they? Did Greg Allman try to do an ice skating or uh, <laughs> something with where he tried to orchestrate? <laughs> Ice what? rink, like uh, he tried to. Uh, no, I'm telling you. No, 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 no. He tried to. He wrote music for people to ice skate to. And no, no, that never happened. Who was that? <laughs> Hopefully, we never oh, get man. to that point in the show. Where oh, you know, it might be Edgar Winter. <laughs> no, get out of here. It's the <laughs> ice capades, Jim. No, Is no, no. I'm telling you. All right. So anyway, we're going back into the archives. I'm going to do a uh, what you call it, a news story here, and I wanted to find one that made sense and I went back into the old issues of Madhouse Magazine and I found one about Cher. I have to give you back this album because it's it smelling smells so bad. So bad. <laughs> I'm gonna pass These out. are all original. These are yeah, old, old strong. albums. Yeah, yeah. These albums are older than Nikki and Jimmy combined. Yeah. <laughs> so I love every smell of it too. So anyway, this <laughs> article it was about uh, it came out last year and it was a street man attends Cher concert. <gasps> News of the year. Leon Kornblum, 58, of Wichita, Kansas, was the first street man to ever attend a share concert. At the behest of his wife, Sheila, Leon agreed to attend the concert after hours of nagging. Leon said, I do like gypsies, trance, and thieves. Leon and Sheila attended the concert at the Bellagio Hotel in Vegas Sunday night, and Leon was thrilled by what he saw. I felt like Christopher Columbus in a new world filled with glitter, sequins, and assless chaps, said Leon. <laughs> I loved it, and I will be surely attending more concerts like this. Bring on Liza and Bette Midler, Leon <laughs> gleefully exclaimed. Sheila then snapped at him. Sit down and shut up. You sound ridiculous. <laughs> there you have it. All the news not fit for print. So thank you for joining us here on our Greg Allman tribute. I hope uh, really everyone enjoyed you. this, that the, uh, people don't say, oh, they didn't take it seriously enough. Well, I like Greg Allman way more than you do. I love Greg Allman. Love the Allman brothers. And we're going to, like I said, we're celebrating his life, not crying yeah. about his death. So it's very sad, but, uh, you know. Life goes on. Yes, yep. he, he had a good life. You know, if you think about it, these uh, rock stars, they live, you got to start counting rock stars like you do with dogs. Yeah. That uh, They do so much. You yeah. should have died in the tattoo problem. Exactly. Yeah. For, uh, <laughs> I mean, really. I have to say, for Let's every rock star, <laughs> really what can. would be the correlation? For every dog year, it's uh, seven say, to human, right? I'd right. say five. So, <laughs> I'd say one. Well, no, because then Greg Keith is Richards, like 450, 450 years yes, old. I mean, yeah. All right, yeah, let's go with that. I mean, or at Keith least two to one. Two to, I, I'm fine with that. Two to one yeah, ratio. Yeah, two to one ratio. Is that same reasonable? Yeah, that's fine. All right. All right. It's one and a half for me. <laughs> so, all right, so thanks for joining us here on Live from Dennis's House, our Greg Allman tribute. Check us out, 474 The Mix, live from Dennis's House, Madhouse Magazine, and we'll see you next time when we'll be doing a Chris Cornell tribute. Oh, Let's nice. hear it for us. <laughs> <laughs>